SES Kenyans. There is mass exodus out of Uda Party. Most politicians are ditching the Uda Party and they are doing it at a terrific speed. So far, we have seen politicians mainly drawn from Western Kenya, Central Kenya, and Coast Region ditching Uda Party. And also, we have also seen quite a number of politicians drawn from Ukambani region also ditching the Uda Party. Ladies and gentlemen, so far from Western, Major John Waluke has already shown interest of joining ODM Party and he has even supported ODM Party candidate for gubernatorial race in 2022. That's Tim Wanyonyi. We have also seen Didmas Baraza flip-flopping, just giving a sign that he's also on his way out of Uda. We have also seen quite a number of politicians from the larger Mount Kenya region who were previously ardent supporters of William Ruto and Uda Party going silent, and some have been seen hmm, talking nicely with Karanja Kibicho, one such politician being Girishi, this Kirinyaga women rep. He was recently seen coying very nicely with <laughs> Karanja Kibicho, a clear indication that she is on her way out of Uda Party. At the coast, we saw today Kuala Governor Salim Vuria and his deputy governor paying a courtesy call to the president. And you know that's just an indication that they are also on their way out of Uda Party. For quite some time, this governor has never been seen in Uda rallies and even the member of parliament from Samvweni, Faisal, has Avoided order rallies for quite some time now, ladies and gentlemen. That's a given fact, and that's something that we cannot argue or debate upon. It's a given fact. What most people don't know today, ladies and gentlemen, that as other communities are running away from order, Rift Valley members of parliament are also running away from order and some are joining Kanu. That's what most people don't know, ladies and gentlemen. Just last week, Sotik Member of Parliament, Dominic Kosgei Kipkoech, Sotik Member of Parliament, ditched Uda and joined Kanu. He officially joined Kanu from Uda. And a week before he ditched Uda, Dominic Kosgei had dropped a bombshell. He claimed that there was a fundraising that was done for border border riders in his Sotik constituency. Upon the Arambe being done and money being collected, the money was handed to one William Ruto, the deputy president. So he dropped the bombshell because he, he told us, or rather he told the whole country, that the people on the ground, the border border riders, have been blaming him that maybe he had eaten the money. So he came out clearly in broad daylight and said that the money that was collected was returned to one William Samoy Ruto. A week later, he dumped order and officially joined Kanu. That one member of parliament from Rift Valley, a college in MP, who has already dumped order and joined Kanu. We also have Moiben Member of Parliament, Silas Kipkoech Tiren. Silas Kipkoech Tiren, his beef with William Ruto started, started far much earlier. He has been having issues with William Ruto on issues to do with the plight of maize farmers in Wasingishu County. Silas Tiren is a non maize farmer. And he believes that the person who has destroyed maize farming in the Rift Valley is none other than William Ruto. 
He is also on his way out of older ladies and gentlemen. We also have an Ibukoi member of parliament, Chep Kut William Kamuren Chirichir. This one is the guy who won the seat on an independent candidate. He's one guy who does not see eye to eye with William Ruto. And most likely, he is also maybe not, is also not most likely going to stick with Uda or with Ruto, but is also going to look for an alternative house, maybe Kanu or any other party. Then we have Kese's member of parliament. This Muindo has done a lot of development in Kese's constituency. One, Mishra Swarup Kipro. Mishra, so Mishra Swarup Kipro is the member of parliament who some months ago made it very clear that the handshake is uniting the people while the hustler narrative is dividing the people. So we also have, okay, we also have some members of parliament from Rift Valley who are not really in order, but are bitter critics of William Samoy Ruto, the likes of William Kamket. We have Cherangani member of parliament, Joshua Kutun, who also most likely is not going to board the Uda vehicle. So ladies and gentlemen, these are just but a few members of parliament who have come out in public and made it made clear their stand on matters political parties. They have come out and distanced themselves in public from Uda party. We also have quite a number of influential politicians from Rift Valley, the likes of Budotich, this one called Buzeki, this one from Wazengishu. That one does not see eye to eye with William Ruto and is also praying very much for Uda to die a natural death, ladies and gentlemen. We also have the majority leader in the Senate, Senator Pogisho. That one is also not a good fan of Uda. That one is a handshake material and a Kanu diehard. We also have governors the likes of Lonyangapuo. That is West Pokot governor. We also have Marakwet. Marakwet. Um, we also have Elgo Marakwet governor. Alex Tolgos, those are not in the Uda bars. So ladies and gentlemen, I've just but counted a few. There are quite a number of leaders from the Kalenjin Rift Valley who are also on their way out of Uda. So it's not just other communities deserting Uda, but it's also Kalenjin themselves deserting this party called Uda. I don't know the reason, but most likely... In their own wisdom as politicians, they already know that this is a party that is going nowhere. It's a party that is going to die a natural death very, very soon, ladies and gentlemen. Now let's go, let's go back to Rift Valley a bit. Ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> Rift Valley as a whole has about 14 counties. Out of these 14 counties, it's a given fact that Ruto only enjoys support among the counties that are predominantly Kalenjin counties. But those counties, from the way politics is starting to play, those counties are, are also becoming very slippery for the deputy president. Kalenjin counties in Rift Valley that as of now Ruto might be having, enjoying some good support, we have West Pokot, we have Wasingishu, his Ruto's home county, we have Elgeo Marakwet, we have Nandi, we have Baringo, we have Kericho and Bomet, ladies and gentlemen. Those are the Rift Valley counties that currently Ruto is enjoying a sizable support. But this support, ladies and gentlemen, I've always, I've always maintained in this channel that this is not a genuine support. It's not a true support. It's a false support. And in this channel, I started saying it long time ago when most analysts were not seeing it. I started saying that William Ruto's support in, 
generally in Kenya is false. And now Kenyans can see for themselves clearly that the likes of Kimani Chungwa and Dinyonos were just promising Ruto what they could not deliver. And that Ruto's maybe popularity right now as things stand is now just being squeezed to Rift Valley. And then again in Rift Valley, there is also a rebellion brewing. Some kind of rebellion, a serious rebellion is brewing in Rift Valley. Because I've maintained so, so many times in this channel that Kalenjins are following Ruto, not that they love Ruto. They are following William Ruto because William Ruto is a Kalenjin like them and also because William Ruto is the, Kale, is the senior most Kalenjin who is closer to power. That's why Kalenjins are following him for now. Assuming the Kalenjin community gets an alternative, alternative candidate or person in the name of Gideon Moy, there is going to be a very big problem for William Ruto in the Rift Valley. And I'm seeing that Kalenjins have got some kind of natural support for Gideon Moy as compared to William Ruto. William Ruto works so hard to endear himself to the Kalenjin. But with Gideon Moy, not that I love Gideon Moy, in fact Gideon Moy is one of the most useless politicians we have around. But Gideon Moy has some kind of natural support hmm, from the Kalenjins. Maybe because of the networks his father had already built. So as politics continue to span out, we are going to see very interesting scenarios in the Rift Valley. Most Kalenjins are very sure as are going to align themselves to Gideon Moy because as of now, we can see that Gideon Moy is forming some kind of a coalition with ethnic kingpins from other tribes. But we are seeing William Ruto on the other side is just a lone ranger. You know, Kenyans don't want lone rangers. Kenyans want somebody who is with others. And very sooner than later, we are going to see Kalenjin starting to coalesce around Gideon Moy simply because as politics plays out, Gideon Moy is most likely going to, be, to appear to be closer to power than William Ruto. And with the impending impeachment of William Ruto Fox, I think Ruto should pray very hard for the impeachment not to succeed. Because should the impeachment succeed, then William Ruto is going to lose even the Kalenjin base before even 2022. Let him pray for the impeachment to at least delay till 2022. But should the impeachment succeed this year, then by 2022, ladies and gentlemen, William Ruto is just going to be an empty shell. He shall have been reduced to zero, to nothing at all. So as of now, folks, ladies and gentlemen, you can see clearly that the thing of hustler narrative that was just but a wet dream. It was just a hot balloon, a hot air balloon. There is nothing like hustler or, or dynasties in Kenya. In Kenya, we have ethnic blocks. And in election, ethnic blocks gang up to win an election. Hustlers don't gang up to win an election, but ethnic blocks gang up to win an election. A smart politician will not waste his time talking about the hustler narrative because it doesn't exist in, the, in a Kenyan vocabulary or in a Kenyan dictionary. We have Mkamba, we have a Jaluo, we have a Muluya, we have a Kikuyu, we have a Mkalenjin, we have a Giriyama and a Mijikenda and all those Masais and the Kisis. We don't have hustlers. And that is where Ruto is seriously failing, ladies and gentlemen. Otherwise, from all these happenings, you can clearly see that William Ruto is a man under siege. And it's just a matter of time before what I'm saying here exposes itself in broad daylight. Because in this channel, we always look ahead what most people have not seen. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you bumped on this channel or rather on this video for the very first time, tap on the subscription button and on the notification bell in order to get a notification 
anytime we upload a new video. Otherwise, God bless you. God bless Kenya. Thank you.